<laughs> All right. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest. Today, I have my friend Brandon Cole on the podcast. How you doing, Brandon? I'm awesome. Thank Dude, you it's, for asking. It's great, great to have you here. Thank uh, you for having me. I know this conversation will probably end up going in a million fucking directions, uh, just like it does every time we're fucking chatting on uh, Facebook Messenger or something like that. There's Shit no is about that, man. ridiculous, bro. So I'm looking forward to this podcast. As am I. I, uh, I spent the morning watching uh, Snowpiercer, as you were talking and we were talking about on yeah, the Messenger. Yeah, you were and telling the, me that. The fucking, uh, what's it called? The, the theory that it's the sequel to Willy Wonka? Yeah, which was yeah. great. I enjoyed that YouTube video. Uh, you Thanks for turning me on. Too? Oh yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah. I was wondering if you had watched it. That's good. Yeah, you like it? Oh, dude, it was, it was perfect. It matched up great. I love stupid shit like that. And uh, <laughs> taking a kids' movie like Willy Wonka and saying that Snowpiercer is a, uh, like a post-apocalyptic, yeah, yeah. Uh, violent R-rated movie is the sequel to Willy Wonka is hilarious. That's yeah, pretty gnarly, man. And it worked out great though. Like it's like yeah, it, it does line up. That's what's crazy about it is it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It really does make a lot of sense. Yeah, and I love dumb shit like that. That's yeah, fucking hilarious. Yeah, me too, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. So you've been watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles recently as well, right? I <laughs> have, man. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with the first one specifically. The first two I, I like a lot, but that first one I am kind of obsessed with, especially the Shredder. I think he's one of the most awesome movie villains out there. Yeah, you got me to watch that as well. You oh. watched it? Oh, yeah, we definitely put that yeah. shit on. Yeah, April O'Neil and um, fucking... Was it Casey Jones is his name with the baseball bat or? Yeah, he's the one with the hockey stick yeah, the and, hockey the, and stick. the crazy, you know, the hockey goalie mask or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude, fucking, the first one was great. I remember as a kid, I was like, fuck, they're putting everybody in the movie. Yeah, the, fr the first one was awesome. I thought, when I was younger, I never really understood the whole darkness part of it, but now that I'm older, I can kind of have like a different appreciation for it. Yeah. So now I realize that it does have quite a perfect balance of darkness and light. Uh, darkness and like uh, lightheartedness, in my opinion. Yeah. So I like it. Um, I have a, a much more of an appreciation for it now than when I was younger. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I remember you saying something about like the second one was missing that whole darkheartedness in the in the cinematography of yeah, it and everything, you, yeah, right? Yeah. You remember? You remember? Uh, I was telling you why that is. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, a bunch of parents after the first one complained that uh, the turtles were using their weapons too much. <laughs> so they they actually, if you if you watch in the second one, you see like Michelangelo using sausage links as weapons, and then you see Leonardo using just sticks, and they're not using their swords. He's not using his nunchucks, and apparently, it's all because just parents complained about it and. I don't want to say they ruined it because it's still a good movie, but it wasn't the first one. Yeah. The first one was awesome. They used their weapons. I mean, they're ninjas. If they don't use their weapons, I mean. What are they doing, what are right? They, what are they going to do? They're fighting crime here, you know? They I are mean, fighting crime. You can't fight crime with sausage links. Yeah, this is serious. You know? This is serious stuff. Most crime definitely. fighting in pizza, right? Most definitely. <laughs> That's fucking great. No, I love it, man. I love, uh. I love your perspective on the world, man. You're always fucking sending me crazy links and fucking I talking hell of shit. I am sending you crazy shit. links, man. I have a habit of just sending you stuff and c completely rambling to you. A lot of times I'm like, man, I wonder if he's just like, dude, when's the guy going to shut up? No, I love it, man. That's why I brought you on, man. It's like, fucking, let's just talk about and this shit. That's why person, I never stop you know? rambling to you because I figure yeah. somewhere in there you're going you're gonna to find something that you like. I like it all, man. It's fucking great. you know. The, That's good, man. That fucking, That's awesome. Finding that uh, that twisted perspective on the world is fucking great, man. I yeah. Mean, like, uh, yeah, yeah, that like the Snowpiercer thing is it, it cracked me up, man. And then, it is pretty gnarly, isn't yeah. it? Though you got this totally bright, lighthearted, colorful musical comedy uh, kid movie from the seventies, and it's it's weirdly related, and it completely makes sense in that video to this dark post apocalyptic post apocalyptic rated R movie directed by one of the most well known greatest directors of our time. Yeah, in, in my opinion, I mean. You know, he did have a movie that, that won Best Picture in the most <laughs> recent Oscars. You know, I, I like his uh, I like his style. Um, he'll be taking you down some fucking dark, dark stuff in the movie, and then the characters in the movie do some just bonkers shit. You know, it's just really like kind of uh, campy almost, mm. in in the darkest of places in the movie, and it just it was. 
uh, it made it really enjoyable. Like mm-hmm. I was like, "Fuck, this movie's fucked up." Like I watched the first thing this morning, so I, you know, like I could be, uh, I could watch that YouTube video you sent me and understand what the hell they were talking about. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I was like, "Man, this is a heavy movie for right away in the morning." You know, like yeah, it's a, it, it is a pretty gnarly movie. <laughs> but they do some fucking. Uh, there's a lot of funny shit in that movie too that that was cracking me up. Where they take you away from that darkness for a second and give oh, you yeah. some campy dumb bullshit. Yeah. I love that about movies. That's what I want to do when I start shooting some of the stuff that we're doing is a Hell lot yeah, of campy man. fucking dumb bullshit. If you think about it, though, even Willy Wonka had a little bit of darkness to it. Willy Wonka's a dark-ass movie. It is a dark-ass movie. They call it a kid's movie, and it is awesome, and it's, you know, lighthearted, it's colorful, mm-hmm. but it is pretty dark, man, especially that scene when they're on the boat going through the tunnel, man. Yeah. Those are some pretty graphic images, dude. I would say that that's not for kids. No, know? not at all. Yeah. And I like... um uh, Les Claypool and Primus did that whole uh, album, like the uh, Primus and the Chocolate Factory, where they redid all the songs. And then there's versions of on YouTube where you can watch. And even my buddy made uh, one before it was on YouTube and sent it to me. He was mm-hmm. just like, I know you're going to fucking love this. And he lined up the whole movie with the songs, mm-hmm. with the Primus version, mm-hmm. which the Primus version does all those songs super dark, super eerie. Oh, I have no doubt about that, man. And it's like, oh, I just... Um, it brings all the it brings all the darkness out of the movie because the music's not all yeah. you know Willy Wonka Willy yeah. Wonka oh, and yeah. all that fucking crazy you know high tell me they do a dark version of Pure Imagination they do all that's my favorite one that's my I, favorite one too I would um I would close my uh, tribute shows with that with the the Primus version of Imagination I'm gonna have to listen to that and uh, I I can't believe I haven't heard that I need to listen to that it's really good. I That's have no doubt about that, man. Les Claypool is yeah. uh he's a bit of a genius. Oh yeah. He's fucking crazy. Absolutely. I went and saw that twice. Like I, I got tickets on StubHub and paid way over price for him because it's fucking StubHub, but it lets you go get to you know, you get to see sold out shows if you got you some do, cash. You do. Um But uh yeah, I drove all the way to LA to to see the um the chocolate factory because they were gonna skip Vegas. Mm-hmm. And then they ended up coming to Vegas anyways. Fuck four tickets to that one really? too. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, hey, at least you got to see them, though, right? Oh, I got to see it twice. I've, I've seen them a million times. I got to see the Chocolate Factory twice, though, which was dope. I would love to see that, man. Yeah. I would really love to see that. They'll never do it again. Like, that's how they do. That's criminal. Yeah. That's you gotta come. I mean. You got to go see the show when it's happening. It's I, like, I will. One of the ones that I'm bummed I missed was uh, Duo de Twang, where he teamed up with Tom Waits. Mm-hmm. And then they fucking toured the country, and they, they toured the album. And they said, thanks, everybody. And then he went on to his next project. And, like, he'll you'll never see that again. And it's just like, son of a bitch. Uh, it, is, it is messed up, man. It's just, just knowing that you'll never get to see that kind of brilliance again. Yeah. You know? You got to live. Uh, you got to make sure you're living uh, every moment. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is why I went and saw Steve Vai when I could. Oh, nice. I, I know that Steve was Vai. kind of out of nowhere. But, yeah, I went with Rosen, a, a, another friend, and... Steve Vai, he came here, and he had some of the most brilliant musicians I've ever seen. He had he had a couple of violinists with him on his show who pl- actually played a pretty big role during that concert. I've never seen anyone play the violin like this. I didn't even know the violin could be played like that. So it was it was one of those shows where my jaw was just hanging open the whole time. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, dude. Uh, yeah, Steve Vai saw him with um, Joe Satriani, and I think it was Malmsteen. Mom scene doing the mm-hmm. G three kind of thing. It was one of those you know guitar three tours or whatever. Yeah. It was like three yeah. guitar fishing. I was fucking awesome show though. Oh, Steve I have no doubt about dude. that, man. Yeah, I have no doubt. All three of them are pretty amazing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I particularly like Steve Vai over them only because I think that his style, uh, the sound that he produces, can only be produced by Steve Vai. He's one of those guitarists that you're not gonna get that sound. You're not gonna be able to to duplicate um, his style unless his hands are on the guitar. Yeah. And it's that's a, it's as simple as that. There are, there are a lot of guitarists out there. I mean, that's what I, personally, that's what I respect the most about a guitarist is if he can create a sound that you can't get unless that guitar player is on the guitar. And I think, to me, that's what makes a guitar player stand out. Steve Vai is one of those. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about this on, uh, on another podcast, how... Uh, the guitar is one of those uh, great instruments where uh, the timbre of your fucking guitar and all your distortion pedals and your amplifiers and like yeah, the way you play specifically, it's like all these variables add up into this unique snowflake of like mm-hmm. this guitar tone. And then some people who become amazing at it, they're 
their uniqueness is is very much defined Most and definitely. stands out like Most steve definitely. vai steve vai eddie van halen's a really good example too oh yeah he's pretty awesome i always like uh uh mentioning <laughs> dimebag daryl in it too like oh, cause his tone and the way he absolutely. would pinch yeah. notes and like all these things yep. that he do- did his little dive bombs they, and everything yeah he, he, a, a lot you of them, know that's dime exactly and other people can do dive bombs but there's a there's a certain sound that when he does dive bombs there's a certain way that his sound that I don't think you can get with any other guitar player because it's just the way his hands do it. It's the way he hits the strings. It, you know, it's the way he strums. And like I said, I, you can't get it from any other guitar player except for him. And I, Dimebag Daryl is absolutely one of those guitar players. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, fucking, what was it, uh, Zach Wilde doing that too. Like, he would, he would hit that pinch harmonic. I was just thinking about that too. I was yeah. just thinking Zach Wilde. Yeah, he hit that pinch harmonic in every every five fucking seconds mm-hmm. and every fucking And his sound <laughs> different than everybody else's, well, at least in my opinion. Oh, yeah. yeah. Zach Wilde's pinch harmonics, I mean, I guess that's uh, pretty much what he's known for. Um, his pinch harmonics sound so different than everybody else's, and I'd like to think that that I could tell the difference. Yeah. But he, he, he he's brilliant too, man. He's one of those one of those guitar players, absolutely. Oh yeah. I love the stuff he did with Ozzy. Most uh, definitely. That was my favorite shit he did. Like I like the BLS stuff too, you know, but mm-hmm. My uh, my buddies are like uh, overplayed the shit out of the VLS on me, so I got sick of it. Plus, we were working with them a lot, like um, yeah. House of Blues days. You know, it was like mm-hmm. it, it seemed like Black Label Society played House of Blues like every four months when I was working there. It was really? crazy. Yeah, I don't know. It seemed like they were fucking coming through a lot. And hmm. uh, I haven't seen them live. Oh yeah, do they kill it? They go out and fucking kill it. They're pro. You oh, know? I have no doubt. Yeah, and I have uh, no doubt. and Zach's sober, so he comes out drinking fucking O'Doul's in a in a pint glass. And so he's just sh- really? he's, out, he's out there fucking shredding it. Yeah, he's like it. It seems like they're up there partying, mm-hmm. but they're they're up there working, mm-hmm. you know. And they oh, and they definitely. get it done, and they get Absolutely. it done really well. Yeah, no, Zach was gonna fucking die. He was like, well, you could die, or you could stop drinking. He goes, fuck. <laughs> oh, sounds like a decision you'd have to think about. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so he still, but he still goes up there and has the fake ones just to encourage. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, that's your job when yeah, you're a musician. Absolutely, your job's to sell booze. You know, you're up there. You're up yeah, there right. at yeah, a right. at a bar that, that <laughs> it's only going to make money if you encourage people to drink as much as possible. And oh, so it's absolutely. like, yeah, we bring a lot of people and they drink lots of booze. That's a great band. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what songs you play. That, I was just going to say, it doesn't even matter if they suck. If they sell plenty of booze, hey, book yeah. them. Book them. Who cares? Yeah. Do they bring? They brought 150 people, and every single one of those people brought three drinks. Oh, well, fucking yeah, cool. My God, let's book those guys again. Hell yeah, yeah. man. Hell yeah. I, I you know what? It's funny. Uh, since we're on the topic of Zach Wild, uh, you seen that movie Rockstar? Oh yeah, I really, really love the songs that he plays in on that movie. He, um... we, <laughs> Anthony got the guitar from that movie in Rockstar. Really? The V that's like the devil face that mm-hmm. he's that Zach Wild's playing in the beginning yeah. of the. He ended up buying that at Guitar Center one what? day. It was like sitting in a glass case, and he's like, "That's the fucking sickest thing ever." He had no idea it was even from the he, movie, he right? Like, it and he didn't know. He bought it because he just liked the way it looked, and it was and it was like uh, a good deal or whatever. Um, but because it was like a prop guitar, right? So it was like it was like an Epiphone that said Gibson on it, and they had the when you flipped it over, right? It was like, well, it looked great on camera, but yeah. like the attachments for all the custom pieces mm-hmm. weren't exactly good. so you got a good deal on it. But it was like That's it was true. the actual prop from the fucking movie, and then he ended up selling it later. I was like, how do you? I can't believe you fucking sold that thing, you know? Like, well, but yeah, and did but it he, sound he, good he ended up getting a, you know some cooler guitars, and he was always swapping his guitars around. Really. It sounded all right, yeah. Yeah, it sounded good. It looked really fucking cool, though. And we were like, that's the fucking oh, yeah. guitar from the movie. Yeah, that guitar is pretty damn gnarly, man. <laughs> yeah. That whole movie's gnarly. Oh, I loved that movie. I thought that was great. I liked the um, the tri- the two tribute bands in the same town that are, like, dueling with each other. Yeah, oh, that was so funny. And you know the singer of, um, not, excuse me, um, Mark Wahlberg, he played the singer of, like, the, the tribute band in the movie. But you know that scene where... Where he like argues with the dude with red lapel, yeah, with the singer. You you know who that guy is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the singer of uh, Third Eye Blind. Oh wait, is that who that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the scene where they're outside and he says, "Oh, when does Bobby had a, a jacket with red lapel?" Well, the singer that he's competing with, who they replace Mark Wahlberg with, okay, that's uh, Stephen Stephen something. But that's the singer of Third Eye Blind. Oh, and really? I didn't know that until like. A year after I saw the movie, but I couldn't believe that. I was like, "Wow, Third Eye Blind singer is in this movie." 
Like there's so many there's so many rock stars in that movie, and then there uh, are a lot of rock stars in that movie. Yeah, like you, watching back and like uh, especially after you know working with so many of them, vamped mm-hmm. and shit like that, and uh, like just looking back on that movie, you're just like, oh, 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 yeah. oh, I know, like. Uh, there's so many fucking dudes that were just like the bass player in this fucking you know in this band yeah, and like a drummer yeah. in this band and it's like you would never know if you weren't like deep in that industry exactly and then absolutely. like absolutely yeah um, I, I didn't really know who Miles him. Kennedy was before that movie yeah but Miles Kennedy he's in he he's that dude that uh, after you know who, which one he is right no he's uh the one that uh in that scene where Mark Wahlberg's on stage in a big show and. You know, in the beginning of the movie, how he was singing really loud, and the original singer was looking down at him like, wow, this guy can really sing. He might outdo me. Well, later on in the movie, the other singer that is like kind of outdoing Mark Wahlberg, that's singing really high, yeah. that's Miles Kennedy. Oh. The I- singer of uh, Alter Bridge. Oh, we had Alter Bridge at the club. Yeah, see, Did exactly. You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, the singer, Miles Kennedy, that, that's... That uh, yeah. that's him. Oh, that, okay. that dude that he brings up on stage and has him start singing for him. Yeah, and I was I was, I was kind of shocked. I was like, wow, Miles Kennedy's in this movie. That's funny. Yeah, see, yeah. there's so many fucking people. There like are that a lot of people. Like in the that whole movie. movie is just scattered with it. And like Most when I was definitely. a kid watching it, even being a fan of like uh, of the '80s rock and that mm-hmm. kind of the metal and stuff like that. Like as a kid, I still like be blinded by most of it, man. Like I didn't see, and then like but. You know, six years at fucking vamped in like you know working in Las Vegas is like the '80s rock capital of the world now. It's just like I know, I, dude. It's like oh, I know all those fucking people. Yeah, <laughs> like, hell yeah, the, man. It's like all my fucking friends are in this movie. It's so funny. You you guys played at your your old band. You guys played at vamped quite a bit, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, obviously a lot more than we did, because well, I would I mean, always see advertisements with your band playing. When when was the last time you guys played there? Probably a while ago. Fuck if I know, man. It was a long time ago. <laughs> At least like five years ago, something yeah, like that. Yeah, same with me. I just didn't know if maybe it was a little more recent or anything. No, 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 no. We had... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we, we don't... I don't really talk with them anymore. They they got rid of me, so... If I just move on... Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have brought it up. No, it's My fine. Bad. No, it's fine. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, yeah, and no, I haven't been over there in a while. Yeah, fucking no me neither yeah but, well I, I i recently got invited to go there um before the whole covid 19 thing happened um dallas invited me to come watch a show uh but i feel bad because every time him and rose invite me i never go oh uh, yeah and uh, they get pretty upset with me about that you gotta go man you gotta go out and live yeah. life you're gonna regret it you know you're gonna be fucking uh 50 years old going 50 years old going, dude, I should have gone to vamp that night. Yeah, I, uh, I wish I had something to do. <laughs> and it's like, well, when I was younger, I had shit to do all the time, and I didn't do it, and now I am fucking want shit to do, and there's nothing to do, and it's just like... I know. You got to take that fucking opportunity when it's presented to you. I always regret it when I do this shit like that, like where I... Uh, um, yeah, when you bail on commitments to friends, or you're like, oh, we're supposed to go see a f- show, or go to this fucking... Event party and you're just like ah, i don't feel like it right now at the moment and you know what you're that you're right about that because i know that you know i might kind of laugh about it but it's really nothing to laugh at i do feel bad because i should so i should show my support to my friends as they've always shown support for me and so i mean but you're right though i kind of do regret not going you know these these are my boys and there's no reason to not support them especially when the place that they're playing at is within 10 minutes of your of your apartment yeah so but no, like uh, my point is, I, I agree. I kind of do regret it a little bit. Yeah, like the uh, um, like the whole local scene gets uh gets built around that, right? Like everybody needs to get their friends and family out to a club, mm-hmm. and nowadays it's really hard to get people the fuck out of their houses. You know, it's uh, it is especially with what's going on right now. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and everybody's got all their shit in their house. Like they don't need to go anywhere to do anything. Absolutely, and it's kind of become this thing where people are like not interested in going anywhere and mm-hmm. do anything i don't think so much right now when we're all told we can't go anywhere and do anything yeah. and we're just forced to stay in our houses mm-hmm. uh of course people are like fuck i'd give anything to go see a concert right now Most but definitely. Uh, but yeah then it's like I, I, you give it six months after things are back to normal and everybody will just be making up fucking excuses why they're not going to come support local music and do all this fucking stuff yep. and it's just so easy to sit on your couch and not go and, uh, it is very, very easy to sit on your couch and not go. So that's really convenient sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're just like, oh man. I mean, I am already home. 
and kind of tired. Yeah. Fuck everybody. You know. <laughs> but I, I, that, that's I, that's the thing about it is you never have a good reason. A lot of the times, or with me, and I'm sure it's with the same thing with a lot of other people, a lot of times you don't really have a good reason to not go. Yeah. It's just kind of laziness with a little procrastination blended in there. Just, well, I'm home, and you, it's almost like you look for excuses not to go, well, I'm in my PJs, and, and you know, my foot kind of hurts right now, and I'm binge-watching True Blood <laughs> or Entourage or something. So you, it, it, it feels like, or, I don't know, maybe it's just me. It feels like you kind of kind of just conjure up and create reasons to not go out. Yeah. I don't know if that's with other people, but I know I sometimes think everybody does me. it. Yeah. I think everybody does it. Everybody likes, uh, I think it's like a cliched thing now, too. Like, breaking plans is so great. You know, like, last yeah. minute, you're just like, oh, sweet, I don't have to fucking go anywhere. You know, like, I don't know what that is about. I, is, is that with a lot of people? Is that pretty common? Because I feel like a I lot of times so. that's just me being a really bad procrastinator and lazy. I think it's, uh, unfortunately, it is becoming more common for people, you know, to just be, Damn. just be simply just go, ahead say, eh, fuck it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, that, I, I, it's it's so easy to sit at home and you have Netflix and you have all this fucking stuff just it's so cozy. Yeah, you know, it's it like everybody's really built these big giant cozy nests. It's yeah, hard to fucking man. it's hard to fucking cut the cord and get the fuck out of it. Cut the cord. Yeah, it's just like oh, I finished my work today. I can go back to my big giant cozy fucking nests. Absolutely. With everything in the world on demand. You know. And binge watch shows that I'm embarrassed yeah. to tell people I like. Fuck that, man. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Should be embarrassed to like anything, honestly. Right. Fucking. Uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It is interesting. It's definitely pulling teeth to fucking get people to come see a concert. Yeah, it's like you you have to give them some serious kind of motivation to do it. They, you know, I mean, I don't know. If it just feels like unless they have some legit motivation to do it, and they're not gonna go just to go see. It's like, oh well, well maybe I'll go if like I'm. Um, I'm meeting a girl there or something. Yeah. You know, or maybe I'll go if, if I know that I'm going to get free drinks. Yeah. But I guess with a lot of people's support, it's just not a good enough reason. Yeah. So it seems. And I think, you know what, whenever I, um, whenever I would want to go out all the time, right. That was when I was in like my early twenties. Same here. And I was like living in a house with like five people and fuck this shit. I, there's no, I didn't have a comfy nest, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's super uncomfortable. You're exposed all the time in a house full of roommates. Everybody's fucking leaving their shit everywhere and stealing your stuff and eating your food, and you're just like... Parking in your spaces in the garage. Yeah. Oh, man. And you're like, ah, oh, fuck this. I'm out of here. I'll, I'll come back and sleep in this shithole whenever I fucking need to yeah, sleep. Yeah, absolutely. That, that was actually what, why what drove me to to not want to do the roommate thing anymore yeah is, which is the reason why i live alone now because back when i had a roommate i was working a graveyard job and every time i'd come home my roommate's girl would always be parked in my spot in the garage and maybe once or twice wouldn't really bother me but it was every night and i'm thinking you don't even live here i want to come home from work at 8 a.m 8 8 30 in the morning after an 8 10 hour shift i just want to come home park in my spot and go to bed i don't want to have to wake you and say well can you get out of my spot yeah you know it's like no, like, no. but but like that's that's the reason i just decided to not have any more roommates anymore yeah it feels good it does feel good not having to clean up after anyone else's mess except your own yeah I think it's worth the extra money to just absolutely, be like, absolutely, not my fucking problem anymore. You know, I wipe my own ass, and I fucking, yeah, yeah. you know, that's all I have to deal with. Yeah, and then your roommates have friends over that have explosive diarrhea in your toilet, and it's like, dude, come on, man, I'm not here to clean up after your explosive shit. But one of my roommates did and have someone stay with us that did have that and refused to clean the toilet. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be talking about that. But, <laughs> hey, <whatever. laughs> just don't drop names in your fire. Oh, no, I'm not going to drop names, <laughs> but, you know, when, when someone who's not living there is having explosive diarrhea in your bathroom, it's like, dude, you shouldn't be here right now. Like, yeah. Come on, man. But, and, 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 and it's your roommate's friend. So I figure no roommates means no weird friends who paint the toilet with their crap. Yeah, that's terrible. Like, who wants to fucking deal with that? Nobody wants to deal with that, man. Yeah. Nobody wants to deal with that. Yeah. After a while, it's just not worth it, man. No, you it's know? not worth it. Definitely not. So, yeah, I'm glad I haven't fucking had goddamn roommates in a, in a while. In, what, four years, I think. Yeah, I guess I have. I have the the one roommate. But she's in the couch. She sleeps in the same bed. Yeah, with I was so. going to say, if you're a couple, isn't it, isn't yeah. it kind of more like, a pain in the ass that then never <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> gotta put up with her shit uh, oh that's funny no nah, it's pretty sweet it's a pretty sweet deal and uh 
and she encourages the house to stay clean. So it stays pretty clean. Not like that. No, I was watching, what was it, uh, Tom Segura talking about... Uh, oh, I love Tom Segura. He's fucking hilarious, right? I, love, I was just watching Completely Normal the other day. Man. Oh, yeah? I just, I don't know, he's... Dude, I was crying laughing. I really was. My neighbor that lives below me banged on the ceiling and said, shut up, because I was laughing so hard. That dude cracks me up. He, he he brings tears to my eyes. He really does. I love Tom Segura. Oh, yeah. His fucking comedy is all about uh, just real shit. And I love... Uh, that exact uh, that thing we were talking about though he go that where he starts talking about how gross fucking guys are and how he goes uh just as dirty as you fucking allow the guy to be in the relationship that's how dirty the house is gonna be oh you know? absolutely <laughs> hell yeah it's like just you know we don't give a fuck it's just like hey, no, if, we, it, we really if it's okay know. with you then i'm i'm gonna leave my underwear on the fucking floor then i guess you know like, absolutely he was saying something like that too about his, his joke with uh with hotel rooms he was kind of telling this joke to his audience that said you know if you if you stay in a hotel room after i've stayed in it yeah. shit is gonna itch on you yeah and he said, you know, I wipe my balls and I jizz on the curtains because I know they don't change those. Yeah. And he just has me dying laughing so much. Cause it, and his whole demeanor when he's up there talking is just so calm and collect. And it, it, he tells these stories naturally and he doesn't, it, well, obviously he realizes it, but a lot of it is just so graphic and so extreme in nature. And it's like, he's just telling it so calm, cool and collect. And I just, I think that's what makes it funny. Oh, he kills it. He fucking he kills it. He absolutely kills it. If he was a woman, I'd... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I loved... Uh, he he was up there talking shit, and he stares right in the fucking camera and goes, this is... Uh, he goes, uh, he, you think you can do this or some bullshit, you know? He's like, because you can't. He goes, so sit the fuck back down. Keep eating your goddamn fucking uh, popcorn. Yeah, because you can't do what I'm doing, you know, and like just challenges the fucking world oh, to like it, get off their ass and fucking go mm -hmm. do something cool like I'm doing right here because I'm just telling jokes, you know, and it, and instead of saying, you know, oh, you know, everybody can do it. He, he goes, you specifically, you can't do this. You'll never be able to do this. Hey, and he's right, too. <laughs> he's man. great. Not, not just anyone can do that. But so. uh, well, I like that he encourages people. I think a lot of people, uh, I think that's that's like reverse psychology encouragement he was trying to pull on motherfuckers where he's like, a lot of people go, did you just say I can't do something, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, hold my fucking beer, I'll prove you wrong kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. And pushing people's buttons like that. I thought that was a fun one that he did. But yeah, he fucking cracks me up. I love doing the stand-up thing, man. I'm really working on... Uh, on my own stand-up routine. You told me about that. You were mentioning that. Yeah, it's been fun, man. It's been fun writing. It's been fun working on. I mm -hmm. can't wait till some shit's open where I can go out and start trying my lines out and embarrassing myself. And, you know, it's basically just going to be me going and making a fool of myself. No one's going to fucking laugh, and I'm going to stand there and kick my feet around on the stage and go, well, that was five minutes or whatever. And <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go rewrite all these jokes. Hey, man, but, it's uh, bound to happen. A lot, of, a lot of people who are super famous right now kind of – when they were first starting their career, got booed off the stage bad. I know I, I was watching a documentary on um, Jim Carrey, yeah. and he's one of the most famous comedians. And you know, he, uh, he was saying how he, in you know, his first, like his first year or two when he was starting, he was constantly getting booed off the stage. He was hated by crowds, and this guy ends up turns out to be one of the most famous comedians of all time. Yeah, he's an insane person, fucking yeah. Jim Carrey. That guy's uh, that guy's a fucking trip, man. That dude's gnarly. Dude. It's funny. It, it, I, I just watched The Mask last night and then Ace Ventura the night before. and uh, dude, he, The Mask holds up. I just watched The Mask like the mask a week ago. It does hold up, man. It's still a good it? movie. It still is a great movie, man. Yeah. Like, I started it and I was like, ah, oh, you know, here is like some basic 90s fucking cuts and, you know, it was really 90s feeling in the beginning. And I was just like, okay, uh, my brain's starting to check out. But then, like, it fucking fired right away with uh the cgi is really solid i mean like it looks like cartoons proper and but I, it definitely does fucking, pass the test of time it does it holds up it's a good story it's a classic fucking you know just the, the classic storyline kind of thing Hell and, yeah. uh, but jim carrey's amazing in it and he uh, is the incredible. guys that fucking he's did pretty the, incredible the CGI work in it did a killer job, way ahead of their time, I think. Hell yeah. And you remember when you first saw that movie, when you saw the, the that CGI? Yeah. I remember juicing my pants when I first saw that. Like, damn, that's really good. It is really good. Yeah. It still looks good. And it, like, still do, it does look very good. A lot of the shit you see, um, especially like 90s movies that did, you know, they were 
developing the CGI techniques. Mm-hmm. Um, with our eyes, you know, people that ex- actually exist in 2020, and we've seen fucking Avengers or something like that, right? Where it just looks amazing. Uh, and you go back, it's just like, oh, well, that clearly looks like shit. Uh, I, don't, I can't believe I ever thought this was good, right? But mm-hmm. like, but the mask, on the other hand, yeah. holds up really well. It absolutely does hold up. And to, to this day, it still looks good. But you know and what we were just talking about earlier? What I think, what, okay, so that's CGI, and then obviously the other way to go would be practical effects. Which I love. The first Ninja Turtles movie, those practical effects the costumes and the puppeteer the heads i think to this day those still hold up i think those are the best looking versions of a ninja turtle film at all because you know all the new ones are all cgi yeah and you can clearly see that it's cgi and the point of, ma- of making something look real something look good is that you can't tell it's cgi you shouldn't be able to see that it's cgi i mean isn't that the whole point yeah um but that first movie those first two obviously they did practical effects and in my opinion i think they still hold up brilliantly today Yeah, no, I think they do, too. I like the uh, practical effects in movies. Um, I especially like now where uh, directors are moving into, like, this very practical effect Mm -hmm. mixed with, like, green screen backgrounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then CGI with, like, markers, right, where they're, like, most of what they're filming that's, like, the central focal point of the image you're looking at Mm -hmm. is actual costumes and explosions and like people but then mm-hmm. like they can like take the whole all the walls and do whatever they want with them later and it's like that shit looks real as fuck because you're not really paying attention to the walls right mm-hmm. so the in, the background that they're in is great and uh, i just like the blend of it it's, it really is coming off nice but it's still your brain still goes on watching computer images yes it does and, yes, it does. And and there's just there was something about the old days where there was just no CGI, like mm-hmm. '70s movies and '80s movies and stuff, where they just they were, they weren't even thinking that way when they were in pre-production. You know, they yeah. were like, "We yeah. got to make some fucking costumes and how much?" Yeah, they had <laughs> to can use we blow practical. Up and, they had to use practical effects back then. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't know how long CGI has been around for, but I know that back then. Even if they decided to use it, it wasn't all that great. Yeah. It so like they shit. were kind of forced to use practical to make it look as real as possible. And a lot of those movies did really, really well with it. Like yeah. I said, you know, the first Ninja Turtles. And, you know, I keep talking about that because I'm kind of obsessed with that movie. That, it's a great movie. It is a great movie. Another one that I thought was funny that you um, you were supposed to come here originally on May the 4th. And I was bringing up Star Wars. And you said you were, didn't really watch Star Wars, which I thought was a trip because you're kind of a fucking uh, a nerd like I am with the, well, I'm to- the I'm sci-fi a total stuff. Nerd, but for some reason, I never could get into it. Other than, because I'm really big on villains. Yeah. And other than Darth Vader or Darth Maul, I could never really get into it. And I'm shocked because I know it's good. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I can definitely appreciate it. Clearly, a lot of imagination and work was put into Star Wars, so it's definitely something you need to respect and appreciate, whether you like it or not. Um, I was just... I just never really got into it yeah i figured you'd be a super fan of it what i want to share with you like i'll um i gotta hook you up with it like i I give them to you on a thumb drive or something like that man so you can see them um is i have old versions of like the 1977 Mm. original theatrical releases of star wars really yeah and um that's the thing that pisses me off about what they did right like i'm a fucking star wars nerd but i'm not going to start ranting about it like a crazy person right now uh but when they did the the thing in the 90s where they added all that CGI and mm-hmm. all this extra stuff, um, I think, A, it, like, took away from the movie, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, um, and, and, B, it was, like, an insult to these dudes in the 70s that fucking worked their asses off. Absolutely. And did a killer job. Mm-hmm. If you watch those original movies where everything's done with models on star screen, you know, like the, the, the stars in the background, that's a fucking, that's a backdrop that they use and mm-hmm. everything's models and it's like painted on glass and like they did all these fucking beautiful things and it was this fucking piece of art that they created. Absolutely. And, um, and that shit looks great. Like I watch, uh, I almost exclusively this year um, for Star Wars Day, I did watch it on the Disney Plus because it was it's Disney Plus that. 2020 just came out, that. right? Everyone keeps talking about that. You I don't do. Have it's it. great. I, I need to get that. It's fucking great. I hear great things about it. Oh, dude. It's all the Marvel stuff, all the Pixar stuff, all the fucking- No shit? Yeah, all the Star Wars stuff. The Star Wars universe is huge since Disney did what it's done and, and they started making all the new mm-hmm. stuff. Dude, it's- There's so much Star Wars stuff. There's Star Wars stuff I haven't seen yet, and I just, I, uh, which I thought was cool. Who's your favorite character? In Star Wars? Yeah. Obi-Wan. Oh, okay, cool. All right, he's a good character. Yeah, he's always, uh, 
he was always so calm and collected, you know, and uh, I, I, I always felt like Obi-Wan really uh, characterized the Jedi properly. Like, he embodied what they were talking about the whole time, where I everybody can, else kind of had their own mm-hmm. personality conflicts with it. I think Obi-Wan really um, was, you know, one with the Force. He was very Most um, definitely. humble. I, I can agree with that. And calm, and I, I liked him about it. And, and Ewan McGregor did a good job in the prequels. He right? did do a great job. Uh, Alec he, Guinness he, was great. Awesome. So, yeah, he was the only... That was a weird thing about Star Wars. Here's mm-hmm. yeah, I'm out fucking yeah. Al, Alec Guinness was like one of the only really famous people mm-hmm. in the Star Wars movie. I mean, Harrison Ford obviously became famous. Yeah. But he wasn't really famous when that movie was fucking coming out. He did the American Graffiti thing. He was coming mm-hmm. up. Alec Guinness was like established actor, right? Like mm-hmm. and all this. Everybody else became super famous from Star Wars. Alec Guinness's career fucking did, like ended from it. I was and, gonna say because <laughs> that, that name's not familiar to me. But yeah. Every, but everyone from that from that from star wars is really well known now yeah you know like you know you got um what's it, mark hamill yeah and uh, i mean uh james earl jones han solo but anyway, i didn't mean to interrupt you but yeah no, i no, mean no. everyone from there is pretty well known now but uh, i'm not familiar with that name but yeah that was the guy that the old guy that played uh that played obi-wan obi-wan in the original one yeah but by the time uh, of the, he the was late really 70s too. You know, yeah he yeah. was uh he was like he was like a big name mm-hmm. and uh and then he's like yeah, nobody knows who the fuck he is now. Everybody knows who everybody else is in Star Wars. Is he Wars. well known for anything else? The weird thing that happened. Uh, fuck if I know, man. Like, he just was doing all kinds mm-hmm. of acting before that. See, I don't even... I should know that. Like, I should be able to list off a few movies that Alec Guinness was in before <laughs> Star Wars to even bring this thing up, right? Um, but it's just one of those... Uh, I don't know. One of those odd facts mm-hmm. about it, right? Like, Harrison Absolutely. Ford became a fucking superstar after that shit. Like, Harrison he Ford like, and yet yeah, Harrison so Ford, famous. dude, is... It, I mean... These days, he's considered a legend. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think everyone, well, mostly everyone who know who's a fan of him, I think would mostly agree that maybe Han Solo was where that started. Yeah, was what launched him into superstardom. Oh, big time. You know, big time. I remember seeing a movie that I really liked with him in it called The Fugitive. Oh yeah, the Fugitive I thought that was movie great. was great. Yeah, see, he got Harrison Ford's a fucking stud. You know, even he as he got stud. older. Yeah. He's still fucking. He still kills. He's, he's all like the George movies. Clooney. Still a good looking guy, no matter how much he ages. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking killing it. Killing it. Yeah, I thought he was fucking great in the uh, what was it, episode seven too. He's still mm-hmm. fucking, he's still Han Solo. Fucking still Han Solo. That shit was that still was just as Han Solo as he was back then. Yeah, you know, he was probably like, like I love, I love Obi Wan. Like you're saying, who's your favorite character? Mm-hmm. But fucking Han Solo, right? The guy's a, a intergalactic drug smuggler for the fucking yeah, yeah. the mob. You know, like yeah, in the middle probably of probably what like the most charismatic character. Oh yeah, in there easily. You know the most. Charming, I guess. Yeah, he's one of them ladies, man. He's one of them cool guys, almost like the Tyler Durden of yeah. Star Wars. You know, he's a fucking scoundrel. Yeah, <laughs> scoundrel. I love, I dude, Han was the fucking best, man. The yeah, he's uh, yeah. I get, I could keep talking about fucking Star Wars forever, but let's not do that. How about we talk about this video I have right here? We have uh, something from, uh, I think it actually was from Vamped, right? You guys were playing uh, some Dirty Paradise. This is uh, the song Thunder. Is that yeah, it? yeah. This song is called Thunder. Um, this was one of our live shows at Vamped, and it was before we had recruited a new second guitar player, so we played it with just me on guitar. Um, and uh, it actually didn't sound too bad. You know, that that's why we decided to go through with it, because... The days that we were practicing before that show, we um, we we were hesitant to still go and play live on that particular show because we hadn't recruited a second guitarist yet, and a lot of our songs back then contained a lot of guitar parts that needed two guitar players. Um, but you know, practices sound sounded good with just one guitar, so we decided to go through with it, and uh, um, I, I think we were all pretty happy with the result back then. Nice man, let's check this shit out right here. This is called Thunder! Oh, they got old days. See, I remember those fucking, uh... Those by Merlot Gibson those guitars. Dice. Those dice were killer, man. Those dice were killer. I could never stay off of them. <laughs> it's those little extra, uh... Parts of production that you bring to the yeah. stage. Oh yeah, they make a huge difference. Absolutely, a, a lot of whole little things like that is what creates a live show. It's what contributes and adds to an amazing live show. Yeah. Oh, 
You know, this is so crazy seeing Dallas this good of a showman because I remember our very first band together, which was a long time ago before this band. He was he was not this good and this uh, loosened up and charismatic on stage. He used to be real stiff, real shy on stage, man. He, he's he's really grown into a good performer. Oh yeah, I've been watching Dallas. Uh, oh, absolutely. Sing for like fuck, ten years now. And, uh, yeah, he keeps getting better, man. He's awesome. He does. Hell of a songwriter, man. Hell of a songwriter. I got to get Dallas on here. If I can have him come talk some shit. He always wants to talk some shit. Oh, I have no doubt about that. I'm sure that having Dallas on here would be quite a show. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking A, man. Dude, I'm not going to lie. That beard made me need to go to the restroom. Go to the restroom. We'll watch this this fucking video for a second. Nice. It looks phenomenon. like uh, Trish did that one, huh? I fucking love yeah. Trish. Do you know Trish? Of course, yeah. yeah. See, Trish is my fucking good friend. A lot of our videos on there were done by her, and I don't, I'm don't. i not so sure I've ever met her, which is I, I feel pretty bad about because a lot of the videos that I like of us on YouTube were all done by her, and I'm thinking, how do I not know this lady? <laughs> Yeah, she was uh she was going around doing a bunch of of uh, recording for everybody around mm-hmm. town. It was kind of her thing, you know. Whenever uh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, when things were really popping, man, she would just be coming down filming everybody, putting it all over yeah. YouTube. She had a lot of fun with it. Both these videos that I that I uh, sent you link to, I think both were done by her. Oh, really? Yeah, I think the Great. second one is done by her too. Yeah, good. So if she's if she ever watches this, thank you and congratulations. Oh, I'll send. Her, I'm gonna send her a uh, a copy of it now that I know it's. Uh, yeah, the, the absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely, those, that, that would be awesome. She deserves credit for little, it for yeah. sure. Yeah, fucking awesome, man. So yeah, that was a lot of fun, man. Fucking playing guitar. Are you playing? Uh, you're working on a little like solo thing right now, right? Um, uh, kind of. Um, I'm working on something that um something I've wanted to do for a long time. It kind of involves uh, hip hop. Um, basically, w- I'm just trying to start some kind of uh, catchy little hip hop rock thing going on. I don't want to say rap metal because that sounds a little cliche and old school. <laughs> like, sounds even though I love Limp Bizkit, it does kind of sound like Limp Bizkit style. But I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, artists like uh, Bryce Vine and Hoodie Allen yeah. or Shwayze. Um A lot of their hip hop songs just 
just basically can contain really, really catchy guitar riffs, uh, catchy solos that are, I mean, not solos, catchy choruses that are sang by a good singer, and then the verses will be, you know, wrapped through. And I, I guess you could say that's kind of something that I want to start. I don't know how this genre of hip-hop has not been named, but there are certain songs by certain artists that all have kind of the same vibe and flow, which I've kind of dubbed a genre called beach hop. Beach hop. Yeah, it's it, it's it's like hip hop that you would like hear on the beach or you would play on the beach. And a lot of artists like Shwayze, uh, Bryce Vine, uh, Hoodie Allen, they have a lot of songs that have that really lighthearted, catchy uh, beats and choruses and uh, lyrics to it. That uh, and another group called uh, Air, which is spelled A E R. It's a duo. Uh, they have a lot of songs like that too, and it's just really catchy hip hop with. Um, Courses that are sing and beats that are really really catchy usually played on guitar but uh i guess you could say I'd, I'd like to start something like that and i've already got a buddy who um who kind of sings who wants to be a part of it because all i want to do is just write music and play guitar and bass in the background that's all i really care to do um uh, but my buddy tony who recorded my last ep for us he wants to be the singer and he says he knows uh, a hip-hop artist so i'm hoping to start something like that that's awesome you know um i'd, I'd like to do something like that and uh, being that you're an amazing bass player, you could play bass for it. Right? Oh, know? yeah, exactly. Another Les Claypool, man. That's uh... a... <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know. I was just going to say, I got to- it's, uh, something I totally have time to do is uh, play in another band. Fucking, uh... yeah. That sounds awesome, though. You got to bring that uh, project onto the show whenever you have oh, it going. Oh, absolutely. And I, I already have some uh, some songs recorded, but they're just guitar, bass, and drums. Um, but I've sent them, I've sent them to the, uh, the guy who wants to, uh, be a part of it, the singer, but he's also like, uh, an, an audio engineer, pr- uh, producer kind of guy. Yeah. So I've already sent him a few, um, guitar bits that I've recorded and, uh, he's, as we speak, he's kind of working on something right now for, for me to write other additional guitar parts too. And then for, you know, hopefully if we get like a, a good rapper, uh, for him to write like some good lyrics to some good flows too. Tight. Yeah, because I've always been a huge, huge fan of hip-hop. And even though all the bands that I've played in in the past have been some sh- form of rock, some genre of rock or metal, I've always wanted to do something that involved hip-hop, and I think now is probably the best time to do it. Nice. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I love uh, I love my hip-hop in the morning whenever I'm working out, man. Yeah. I, I'm, I've been really into, like, uh, J. Cole and... Childish Gambino and shit like that. Although yeah, he went back to Childish Gambino, Don, dude. Yeah, he went back to Donald Glover. I guess Donald, now I saw a stand up of him, dude. Uh, the dude's hilarious, and he's oh, a yeah. genius too, man. Because I didn't. He's really great on stage as a stand up, okay. But after I saw the Childish uh, Gambino video for This Is America, but then he did another video. I forgot the name of the song, but that's when I thought to myself, this dude's a genius. He's a brilliant on stage. His music's brilliant because that song. Um, this is America went like to number one globally. Yeah, you know, and that the video, they have videos on YouTube breaking down that video, and kind of detailing and describing the importance of it, and the significance of it. How it's not just another video. Yeah, there are hidden messages in it. He's telling a story in that video, and I think that's brilliant. Oh yeah, no, he's always telling a story. He's always yeah. got mm-hmm. an agenda or some kind of like absolutely. something he's trying to get through to people. Uh, with all of his art, I think absolutely, absolutely. And uh, his TV shows are great too. Have you seen his TV community? shows? Community, yeah, community, yeah, Atlanta. Great. Have you seen Atlanta? I have not seen Atlanta. Atlanta's awesome. We were talking about like the Netflix, Hulu, Amazon thing. If Atl- you get, is if Atlanta you get Hulu? It's yeah, Hulu. Oh, has Hulu. Atlanta. Okay, cool. And uh, Atlanta's fucking cool, man. Like, is it? Yeah, it's kind of funny and lighthearted, but it has some serious shit in it. It's not like really? a comedy like co- community. I was going to say, is it anything like community? Uh, no, oh. it's not like community That's at probably all. a good thing. It's like a serious, like, um, like black experience from, like, you know, uh, Atlanta. So but, That sounds interesting from, like, for sure. I'll check eyes. that. And yeah, it was, it was fun. He's, but he's like a hip-hop artist. He's trying to manage him yeah. and whatever. But, yeah, it's great. It's a it's a really good show. I'd be happy to check out anything involving him because, like I said, to me, to me, he's just he's just a genius. I know. He really is, man. I love his music. He's, uh, that's that's my workout jam whenever I'm running in the morning. Hell, yeah. I got, this I, is America. Yeah. I like... Um, Fucking, uh, what's it called? Oh, I'm terrible at the fucking names. But, uh, 
the chorus is something like, uh, don't be mad because I'm doing me better than you're doing you. It's called... Sweatpants. Sweatpants. Sweatpants? Yeah. Is that the name of the song? That's the name of the song. How That's why have I not heard that? It's a fucking great song, but... Uh, Who does it? Who's does, it? It's, it's Childish Game. Oh, it is? Song, whatever, yeah. Oh, shit. I gotta check that out. Yeah, he's fucking great. That was, that's like, whenever I'm running and that comes on, that fucking gets me going, you know? Oh, that's yeah. One, man. Yeah, 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 him and fucking... Uh, Gets that blood flowing. Yeah, Kendrick Lamar and fucking J. Cole and shit. I got a little fucking Pandora playlist that I rock whenever I'm fucking working out. Oh, yeah, dude, dude. I'm gonna... Have I'll check out anything with Donald Glover. I don't know, man. I'm I, I'm still stuck on the video for This Is America because a lot of even the way he stands in the beginning, in the very beginning of the video, he does a certain stance when he points the gun at the dude. That stance is actually culturally significant through black culture, black history. Okay. Um, if you look at the uh, breakdown of that video, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube that that break down. All the little, uh, little uh, the stance he does, the lyrics, uh, the stuff in the background, how how everyone's okay. How in in the video, how he's dancing and stuff in front, but in the background you see chaos and violence. That's this whole message of like how there's so much of this bullshit going on in America, but entertainment is used as a distraction mm -hmm. so that we're not panicking, going crazy, but. If you look at videos on YouTube of, of breaking down that video, it's actually quite brilliant. And that is what made me, my respect for him just... Not to watch it. Double, triple. It, it's, it's, it's brilliant, man. Yeah, he's a, he's a pretty inspirational cat, man. He's Absolutely. Definitely, uh, he's definitely one of the people that I like. I try to like... Be like, look at him fucking doing it, you know? He, yeah. You yeah. can make TV shows and fucking do stand-up comedy and write music. And, Hell like, you yeah. can do it if you fucking really put your mind to it and just fucking do it, right? Absolutely. And he's one of those cats where uh, I bet he says no to a lot of people because he's just in his fucking workspace writing, 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 getting everything put together. Absolutely. And, like, Most working, people that are that working, talented, working. that much of a genius, they want things their way. They know that what they're doing is good. They know that what they're doing is got, is is the choices they've made and the way that they've decided to do things has got them to where they've has got them to where they are you know i mean i mean dave grohl's another example yeah you know he, he's he's from what i've heard he's one of those artists that is not going to be told what to do he's going to do things his way because he just knows how good he is yeah and he's i'm not saying he's cocky or anything but uh, like i said you know artists of his caliber just know that as long as they're in charge of the creativity that as long as they have full to damn near full creative control that what they're going to put out is going to work yeah you know i mean Corey taylor i think is another one of a slipknot yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i'm a big slipknot fan yeah me too me but too yeah total bummer that joey's not in the band anymore it because a, he was a big part of the bummer. writing process yeah, it yeah, shows on the yeah. latest albums man and his live yeah. shows were incredible man yeah the yeah. whole the drum set like revolving and stuff it was dude their live shows are incredible no slip there was nothing like a slipknot show man. there's nothing I'm like so a slipknot. Glad. I got do you like them better than stone sour oh fuck yeah what okay the good fuck? thank you uh, it's a dumb kind question of right fucking question is i know that? i know thank you thank you i was just talking to another person who was just telling me that oh how much better stone sour is than slipknot and i just looked at him and we were at a bar at the time so i'd um uh i paid for my drink and i left yeah apples are better than bananas yeah right <laughs> The fuck kind of fucking... Th Thank you. Totally. No, no. That's nothing that I would ask genuinely. I Two just, uh, totally mm. different bands. Thank you. And yeah. one of the things that I respect about Slipknot a lot, right? Because they were like... Uh, they created a fucking product mm -hmm. for people like me when I was 17. Mm -hmm. An angry-ass, pissed-off kid who wanted some fucking metal, right? Most definitely. And it's like... But then they're like, oh, but we wrote all these other songs that mm -hmm. are like actual music, mm -hmm. right? As opposed to just... Yeah. And... Uh, and they were like, let's not put that on a Slipknot album, though, guys. You know? Oh, yeah. Let's not do that to all our Slipknot fans. <laughs> and uh, just put this on another record mm -hmm. as a separate entity. Mm -hmm. And I fucking thought that was just the smartest thing they could have ever possibly Absolutely. fucking done. Because, Absolutely. I mean, look what happened with, like, Stained, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. They released this fucking hard rock album. The first Stained album was good. And then... Uh, they fucking hang out with Fred Durst, and he's like, you know that, that one song that was like kind of a sad acoustic -y thing was really good? You should just do a whole fucking album of that. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, well, that's a fucking swing out of left field. You know, it's like you created a yep. product and an image already mm -hmm. that people are buying. And it's like, 
Now you're just going to tell you, you know, yeah, I, I thought that was some garbage. No, I agree. Um, I completely and, agree. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Stone Sour was uh, a genius way of them to like take all their pussy songs from like not that I mean there's still some heavy stuff on Stone Sour, but it's like Get Inside. I thought was a Slipknot song when yeah, I first heard it. It's like it's not fucking Slipknot though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not Slipknot. It. It's yeah. not Slipknot at all. But you know, I mean, Corey Taylor, he's he he's smart enough to know that a I can't do this th- these kind of songs in Slipknot because it's not going to appeal to the Slipknot fans. This has yeah. got to be a completely different project. And it's like, I like those songs too. Those songs are great. But if no they do- put them on a fucking Slipknot album... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, because when you hear something like Iowa, and if you were to hear a Stone Sour like, I'm looking at you through the glass yeah. on a Slipknot album, you'd come be on. Like, dude, come on, man. It, you, you can just keep your shit. Yeah. Like, fuck all that. But yeah. Slipknot is Slipknot, man. And they know what they, their fans like. They know what they're good at. And they're they're continuing to produce it, man. And I think I think Corey Taylor is, is someone to really respect for that. Yeah. I mean, they're doing their best at trying to produce it, you know? I think without Joey, they're fucking dead in the water. Like, I, I can agree with you on that because they haven't been the same since Joey. Yeah, like, uh, he was one of the lead writers, though, for the fucking mm-hmm. band. And they got, I don't know, uh, like, I, I don't know what is public information or not with that whole thing. But they, uh, fucking, uh, but yeah, it just sucks not having Joey there, right? With, uh, their with drum them. and their, their drums it and was, their style don't sound the same without him. It was such him. a huge influence, yeah. Yeah, because he added, his, his style of drumming added so much contributed so much to their sound the sound that they became known and loved and revered for yeah and i think that without him they don't sound the same anymore nah it's not you know, at all. And, and, and and you know obviously we agree on that and i was going to say that's just my opinion but i think that most hardcore slipknot fans can agree that since he's been gone it's not the slipknot sound anymore no and Not Ma- at all. It's what uh, what's his name? If it's Max Weinberg's son, though, is playing drums for him now, right? And uh, from Max Weinberg was the drummer for Conan O'Brien's fucking band all through the nineties. That's 90s. right. So that's his son's right. playing drums for him now, right? And so that's fucking great, you know. Like mm. his son's a great drummer, but he ain't fucking Joey Jorgensen. Like he ain't Joey. Nobody's Jorgensen. nobody's fucking, Joey Jorgensen, man. I, I I know drum machines that can't fucking play that fast, right? Like absolutely, he, absolutely. He's he's a, he's a legendary drummer, and yeah, uh, he is man, and he's it, Slipknot it's drummer. It. He's yeah, Slipknot drummer, man. Like he he, I, he belongs with him. He yeah. really does belong with him. And you know, since he's gone, like I said, you know, they they don't sound like Slipknot anymore. They're still Slipknot, but they're not first album or Iowa Slipknot. Yeah, you know. In my opinion, those two were the fucking. Those are those are the Slipknot that I really liked. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, those oh, first two albums. Absolutely, my favorite, my favorite Slipknot album of all time has always been Iowa. I agree with that. Absolutely, too. Iowa. I think I was back. Brilliant, brutal album. Absolutely. And then they, uh, t- you know, then that's then they, you know, bands start experimenting. They're not going to write the same fucking song again for you know, thirteen do- songs or whatever on an album. That's true. They do it like twice. Like Corn's another good example of that, right? Those first two Corn albums. About Korn too. They were fucking great. They were like this beautiful thing, and mm-hmm. then it's like, well, they're still a goddamn band mm-hmm. that still are. They're like, you know, people are this fucking quantum existence of like uh, infinite yeah. possibilities, and they're just like, I'm not gonna fucking keep writing the same goddamn songs mm-hmm. that I wrote on those two albums, and then people yeah. go fucking, oh, they lost their thing, and it's like, well, they just tried something different. You yeah. liked this thing that they did. Yep. Um, but like artists gotta breathe man you know they, they can't do. just keep reproducing some can like they got to be given room to experiment without that. getting any backlash for it yeah i mean that is that's the whole point of being an artist is experimentation creating new things that's what artists do they create they got to be given room to create or otherwise that defeats the whole purpose of being an artist yeah like i think um i think slayer is a good example where um what was it world pain and blood and i'm a huge fucking slayer fan by the way slayer is awesome i uh uh my first tattoo was fucking slayer oh dude, that's hot yeah i know right <laughs> we did that in my fucking friend's garage yeah so i love slayer right but like mm. like the last album that came out it was uh, they were so um intent on not there's this thing i have right like i think metalheads have that same assholishness that like serious like sci-fi geeks have where they just like they hold they put people on a fucking pedestal right they like, they find this thing they like and then they put it up on a pedestal and then they just it's got to stay that way for some reason you know and mm-hmm. um um and slayer was really good about that i think um but to the cert- so much so that um the fucking songs became this recycled 
mess of their old songs. It's like you can only take that sound mm-hmm. and do so many things with it and so many songs with it before it's just like, well, no, that's War Ensemble again, guys. That's like the exact <laughs> riff. You know, it's, you're like ripping yourself off because yeah. you're not allowing yourself this um, – this room to mm-hmm. to express yourself in different directions, right? You're just like, mm-hmm. let's keep it right here where it works, and um, it's because, one thing to cater to your fans. It's another yeah. thing. It's another thing to be a complete slave to them. Yeah, to where it interferes with you doing what you want to do, or with you with you knowing what you ought to do, and just I don't know. Just, like I said, it's 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 one thing catering to your audience, giving them what you know they like. It's another thing to being a complete slave to where it compromises who you are as an artist. Yeah. And I think, um, and I know Carrie King um, and Jeff Hanneman were both, um, what do they call it? The something police. But if like riffs weren't, they, like they've said that's not a Slayer riff, right? Like, so they had found this sound that was working and um, and they were like determined to, to stick with this formula. Mm-hmm. And so they would literally police each other's riffs. And so as they're writing riffs, really? it was this strict process of like, you know, like that's not, a Slayer riff. That's not how Slayer sounds. And there was like this thing where it was like, well, this is how we're going to, you know, and so there was no, they, they weren't allowed to be that way. Right. And they kept it tight. And, uh, sounds and they, like in that movie Rockstar when he's like, Oh, this is the steel dragon way. Me and yeah. AC write the songs. Exactly. It's a lot like that. That's huh? exactly it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause the way you were describing it was like, was like, oh, that that's really cute and sweet that you want to contribute writing, but you know, me and AC write this song. This is the Steel Dragon way. I mean, the yeah. way you describe it was like, so that that is not far from the truth of how it really is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, and, but they had great success with it, right? I mean, yeah. like they were like one of the biggest metal bands of all time. Right? Absolutely, they practically invented death metal. They yeah. did, didn't they? I can't think yeah. of another one who pioneered. What was Venom? That it stuff. was Black Sabbath and Venom and Slayer, right? Yeah. And then fucking. Cannibal Corpse, the Almighty, the greatest death metal they're the band, band of in all Ace time. Ventura, right? Yeah, they're the band yeah. in Ace Ventura. No, yeah, yeah. And another band that writes the same fucking song over and over again. Yeah. But um, I like I like that song. Like they do get um that that it, it sounds like the same shit, right? Like if mm-hmm. you listen to it from a distance, it's just like. But but it's like. The weird shit they're doing with guitar mm-hmm. is really cool, man. And they do do a lot of experimental stuff, and it does stay yeah. dark and like evil or whatever and heavy. But like, um, but like Cannibal Corpse, man, they do some fucking interesting stuff. They do. They, they do. Yeah, they 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 think out of the box and still keep it, but then bring it back and like put it right back in the fucking box. They mm-hmm. and it's just like oh, I guess that works. It's if you can do whatever the fuck you want, it's death metal. You're yeah. just making crazy ass loud noise. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was gonna say death metal. You know, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't listen to a whole lot of death metal, but I absolutely, I absolutely, absolutely do respect it. Yeah. You know, and um, one of my favorite bands right now started off, I think, as more of a death metal band, a band called Bring Me the Horizon. Okay. I think that I think that they started off as a death metal band. Yeah. Uh, they're certainly not death metal now, but I think that uh, I think their first album or first two albums were straight up death metal. No, really. Yeah. Um, I. From what I've heard, and the few songs of the the few songs that I listened to that were considered their old stuff, were pretty death metal ish, like death metal kind of like blended with thrash metal. Okay. And then they eventually evolved to metalcore, which is what that album uh, Semple, Sem, Sempiternal is. It's a straight metalcore album, which I think is their best album. And now they've evolved to some kind of metalcore blended with dubstep almost oh. you know i mean the, the newer stuff i've heard is is it's really good it's really catchy it's well written yeah. but it, it it sounds like they're it sounds like they're doing the the cliche thing right now yeah but i mean i can't fault them for that because the shit sounds good yeah you know well and you know you gotta you gotta sell fucking records man absolutely it's like, what do you want to be yeah. you know do you want to be the guy who like because like, the guy who stands his ground and just goes i'm gonna write my songs mm-hmm. my way and like not give in to anything that people are interested in listening to mm-hmm. it's like well what the, who the fuck are you trying to sell that to then yeah you know mm-hmm. it's like are you trying to sell somebody so there's like there's that that line or that 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 spectrum of mm-hmm. like how much do you want to give people what they yeah. want but also do your own thing mm-hmm. at the same time, right? And uh, some bands just go all the way. There's like, give them yeah. what they want, what they really, really want. I can only really imagine how hard that must be. It almost, almost kind of being stuck in, 
like one of those be being stuck between a rock and a hard place thing yeah. like like we know what our fans like but the direction we're going is is not what's coming out naturally as far as songwriting goes yeah. uh, i know that some bands have experienced that so uh, a friend of mine experienced that with his old band called escape to fate where he knew what his fans liked but the direction he was trying to take his music in was a lot different than his previous albums that he knows his fans really like but um, i can only imagine how hard that must be to want to satisfy your fans but at the same time want to do what comes naturally to you as a songwriter yeah you know i mean that must be pretty hard yeah you know and you have to find that balance i think with it too and like yeah yeah absolutely make decisions like uh like we were saying like with slipknot right where they say well we'll just make a whole nother th these nicer songs that i'm mm -hmm. writing i'll make a different band for those and so that I don't piss off my fans who love this band. And that's a brilliant decision to do that, to just this, do a whole nother yeah. project. That's a brilliant decision. It really is. It's a, it's, mm -hmm. I think it's a responsible decision Absolutely. to your fan base, Absolutely. right? Because you're not like fucking doing the, the bait and switch, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, yeah. I thought I was getting a metal album and here's all this fucking nice, yeah. you know, chill music. And it's like, I, I wanted to fucking punch someone in the face tonight. What the fuck? <laughs> This isn't what I signed up for, and so yeah, yeah, it's, it's a hard, uh, it's a hard call to make, man. Whenever you're trying to be successful uh, I, at it, yeah, in it I and can like, only imagine, man, monetize your art, yeah, right? Cause monetize then, your art, yeah, because then you already, right? Like the first step of like going, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my artistic expression, mm -hmm. package it into a thing I can sell to people, and mm -hmm. print a bunch of them, and then go out and promote it. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I mean, you're already on that road, aren't you, right? Like, you've officially stopped singing songs for your friends and for fun, and you are selling a product now. Mm -hmm. Like, you've created it. And uh, um, I don't know. I, it's, I don't know what I'm I'm – I'm not trying to make a point or anything. I'm just kind of talking. No, no, like, no, it's funny because what, what you're saying is kind of getting me thinking right now. I think I can kind of build off that, add on to that. What we were talking about earlier, how um, uh, the subject of – uh, appeasing your audience and then but what you want to write and what's coming to you naturally as a songwriter is not what you know them to like I think that Corey Taylor with Stone Sour made a brilliant decision in just making it a whole different project because I think that maybe what brings a lot of bands down is that whole change in style that whole kind of toned down in heaviness kind of is, is the beginning of the end of their career but if you were to do it as a whole nother project, I, I, I wouldn't think that, I don't think that that might be the, the beginning of the end. Yeah. Because it's a whole nother band, it's a whole nother project. It, it's it's something that that uh, that this band is not known for yet because nobody knows about him yet. So I'm gonna start a new band and make this band known for this certain kind of music rather than having my band that ev I know everyone likes completely change their sound and lose so many fans. Oh yeah. You know, so um, like I said, I think that that was a great decision, you know. just make it a whole different project yeah you know i mean i think that's a smart thing to do i agree with it uh 110 percent. yeah and i might be rambling right now because i, I think we just are had a beer i just <laughs> yeah no i'm enjoying one too thank you by the way i appreciate you bringing me over a uh the heineken zero man. oh man it was I my like pleasure man. a lot dude. It was, um, great it was my pleasure man I, I couldn't i can't thank you enough for having me on the show i really do appreciate it no dude it's fun man it's fun i uh i know we um we were talking about uh, discussing meditation as well. You've been uh, studying meditation, working on trying to get you, to find, I've been your, trying find to, your happy well, place. Yeah, I've been trying to. I've been trying to develop the patience to do it because I under, from what I understand, meditation takes a great deal of patience. Um, well, it does. It, um, it it's just uh, it's it's practice is what it is. I think more mm -hmm. than anything, and I think it's um, when I first started with my meditation practices. Uh, I would find frustration in the fact that I, I, when you're not good at it, you don't know if you're doing it or not, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and until you start finding like real extended moments where where you're kind of at that meditative state, you know, for a few seconds, mm -hmm. five seconds. Now maybe I can go for ten seconds. Oh, and now all of a sudden you're starting to realize what your goal is, right? But it's like. There's this part of the beginning that's kind of this foggy thing, like, am I doing it right? What am I doing in the first fucking place? And, um, and so I think, um, I don't know, there uh, a few things to consider, because um, I'm kind of just, I'm just talking. I don't have, like, a, a written out course or anything. No, right? but I could use any advice but, you can um, give me, as I'm, like, right now I'm at just the beginning stages where I don't know what to do. I can use any advice. So um, there's um, 
there's simple practices that you can do, right? Um, where uh, the one I like to tell people to start with is uh, like a counting and a breathing practice. So as you as you start to focus on your breath, right, you'll uh, you take a deep breath in, and let it out, and count one, and then deep breath in, and let it out, and two, you know, and work your way up to ten, work your way back down to one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, eyes closed. Focus on your breath. Just calm your mind. Let th- and um, what you'll notice to start happening is um, your mind's going to start popping thoughts in there, right? And um, and where I'm at currently in my meditation practices is um, really focused on my mindfulness and being aware of those thoughts. Uh, so you don't like validate or anything you 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 just observe the thoughts that come to your mind and know that there's going to be all kinds of shit coming your way and you you it it comes it rises it builds and then it slowly uh goes away and instead of holding on to these thoughts like we do in our normal day right you'll get lost in a you'll get lost in a a rabbit hole kind of thing yeah and you'll just start thinking about that one thing because you're not what you're not doing is you're not being mindful of the thought and allowing it to come and not reacting to it and not mm-hmm. attaching positive or negative um, um, things to the to your thought processes. You just observe and let it go. Mm-hmm. And um, and so while you're meditating, you kind of work on that process of allowing your thoughts to come to you and just move through you. You're not. You're not there to think about these things. And your brain's going to keep chattering. It's going to keep chattering. And uh, eventually, it'll start slowing the fuck down. Because you're not grabbing, right? You're not biting. You're not uh, getting lost in these thought, thoughts of just whatever the fuck. It wants to think about the past, the mm-hmm. future, money. It doesn't matter. It's your brain, right? It's, right. it's, it's job is to be on. It's like, yeah. it's like your cell phone. Your cell phone is going to just constantly be like giving you notifications for all the apps that are on mm-hmm. it and uh, checking the internet for updates. And it's doing all this stuff um, just in the background. Mm-hmm. And your mind's doing the same thing, but you're, you can, you're part of it, right? So you can't, you're, so you're aware of it. And so the, the meditation thing is like, you get that stuff out front. You're not thinking about lost in these thoughts and you find, um, or I find that eventually, you know, that shit will really slow down and shut the fuck up and you can just be at peace with your nothingness. I love my nothingness. Um, that's one of my mantras. I like to repeat in my head when I'm, you know, just sitting, uh, which is I am nothing and I know nothing. And so all this shit that's going through my head is meaningless because I'm nothing and I know nothing. And I can't attach anything to, I can't attach any emotions to that shit. I don't know anything about anything, mm-hmm. you know? I'm just this fucking dumb human who isn't meant to know any better. Um, but, uh, so where am I at? I'm rambling a little bit, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I'm listening. So, so that's really, I mean, it's a weird thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because there's a lot more to it than what I'm just talking about. But um, you just find that that peaceful place in your consciousness. We are not thinking about the future, or thinking about the past. You're you're not allowing yourself to react to thoughts that come into your mind, and um, and you get a nice reset out of that. I find right when you when you come out of that place and you finally allowed all these thoughts to fucking flow through you. And your mind kind of, the tide kind of fucking pulls back a little bit and you just, your brain realizes like, all right, he's not listening to me. I'll shut the fuck up for a second. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can just be there and nothing and realize that that's all you ever are anyways. And all this bullshit and this panic and this anxiety and the feeling of like the world's coming down on you and you're always going to be behind and all that shit that's all in your fucking head mm. 
and you go, oh, fuck, that is all in my fucking head. Um, and it does mean nothing. And I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's great. You know? Um, yeah, I've been told that an important thing about meditation is when you're trying to do it, your brain is going to be going 90 miles an hour, but the key is to not latch on to a, a single thought. Yeah. The key is to not go down a rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. That's, from what I understand, is uh, a very important thing about learning how to meditate yeah, and that's, meditate properly. That's the first step. Yeah. And it's, it is called mindfulness. And, it's, and, and what you do is you find that you can start taking this tool, this skill that you're practicing because mm-hmm. you're going to fucking suck at it. And you suck at it for a really long time, and then eventually you start to kind of not suck. And I'm at mm-hmm. that place right now in my life where I kind of don't suck. you got to right? cry before you can walk, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not good at it, right? But I just do it whenever I have time and mm-hmm. whenever I can. And every time I do it, I'm fucking so glad I did. Um, and uh, and I get a little better. And I get into... Better at it or feeling better? I get better at it. Oh, okay, all right. Um, I... I know where my peaceful place is, my nothingness mm-hmm. is, and I focus on my mindfulness throughout the day, mm-hmm. right? Where I'm not just like aware of my thoughts when I sit to sit to meditate, but I am aware of my thoughts most of the time, um, because it's part of my practice of not losing my fucking mind and being angry, right? <laughs> um, so, like with me, like I have my anger issue. Um, where I'll rage a lot and I lose control of myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a human response, right? But what it is is me allowing myself to react to these things that um, are out of my control. And um, and so I focus on the mindfulness to see myself, ca- it's to catch those thoughts, right? Mm-hmm. I catch those angry thoughts. And they'll slip up, you know? I'll let out a little, I start letting off some steam. Oh, they're fucking computer's not working or oh i gotta change my password on my fucking email so you again. tend to go down a rabbit hole sometimes well all the rage will take over right and yeah. instead of watering these seeds of consciousness in this case watering the seeds of anger um with your focus on and, and your mindfulness you can see that shit sprout up mm-hmm. and you catch yourself and you go whoa that was okay it's okay that you had uh, that you lost <laughs> control for a second Let's stop watering this thing. Let's take a step back. We're gonna stop what we're doing. We're gonna just go walk around the block. We're gonna sit. We're gonna do, we're gonna step out of this energy. Isn't that part of practicing though? Isn't that part yeah. of getting better? Yeah. And Is instead of having to go through that, because instead of allowing the rage to build, because it builds so fast, right? And it becomes like a drug. You lose yourself in it. Uh, really. And um, so like. Yeah, and so, and so you feed it, right? It's like feeding the fire. And so something goes wrong, I get upset about that. If I try to fix it, it doesn't it doesn't work, right? <laughs> um, now I'm going to have to do like three more things to fix this, right? Mm-hmm. I get upset about that. The second time I get upset, I get twice as upset as the first time I got upset. Now I've recognized, oh, something's happening up there. And I'll usually say something at this point, right? See, this is the mindfulness, right? Mm-hmm. I'm observing my own thought processes as they're occurring and my actions as they're occurring. Mm-hmm. And then I'll fucking say something and I'll be upset. When I say something and I give into that anger and I fucking express it verbally to the world, threefold, I just fucked up big time. Now I'm really starting to get mad, right? Over a thing that... <laughs> I should not be getting mad about, okay? <laughs> it's not, and it's, it was never under my control in the first place. And guess what? Shit happens in life, man. When you wake up, you're going to have to deal with problems, right? So it's like you shouldn't yep. be upset about the fact that you're dealing with problems because it's part of your existence. And this is part of acceptance. Um, but that mindfulness practice where you observe your thoughts and stop the anger in its tracks, right? You could just, you just apologize to yourself and also say, fucking totally cool man like hey you know we're human being and Mm -hmm. you were losing control but we caught it Mm -hmm. it's okay don't feel don't let it ruin the rest of your day don't 
get down on yourself, apologize to anybody you're around. Like, hey, I'm sorry, I was like a uh, dick for five seconds, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, pff, uh, my bad. <laughs> and um, you know, go take a walk, and then come back and go. What was I doing, right? Losing my fucking mind over nothing. Um, and so that's one of the things that I really love about um, with my meditation practice that comes into my regular day, mm-hmm. right? Where um, I'm not lost. My brain's not sitting here just just shouting all this stuff at me because that's not that's not what I do anymore right mm-hmm. because uh, and and until I started that meditation process I was I I would have so much trouble sleeping so much trouble with just like yeah it tends to happen to me anything right because your brain just starts going yeah and then you just yep. start thinking about that stuff as opposed to observing that thought and allowing it to dissipate like it's going to you you water it and you give it you give it fuel mm-hmm and you're lost in it. And now you're thinking. Now you're putting energy into it. Your brain's fucking turning itself back on instead of going to fucking sleep. And uh, I don't know. It's just changed my whole life, man. It's changed my whole fucking life. Are there any app- apps that you would recommend maybe would help me to do it, like to download? Are there certain apps or anything that would you would re- you know you'd recommend? Um, there's great stuff on YouTube. Uh, and then there's um, I have a meditation timer app, right? Yeah. That I do. Um, but no, I, I know there's a lot of, like, guided meditation shit. Um, I don't really do the guided meditation stuff, but I um, I know Rocky was on yesterday, mm-hmm. and she sent me some stuff, and I will share those links with you yeah, because she yeah, does absolutely. do the guided meditation stuff, and she really, oh, really? enjoys it. Um, and um, I like to – I read my I read my books, and then I put the practice in mm-hmm. with uh, what the books tell me to fucking do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and usually I like um, – like silence i i really don't like stuff on when i'm meditating i'm really trying to find um my nothingness as it were that's a good way to put it yeah um i really <laughs> like that place um and you come out of it really in, in a beautiful state of mind because um when you find that um you know you're just like life is great in that point where you don't got the TV on, you don't got music on, you're not thinking about shit. Mm. I mean, you're not doing anything or eating anything. You're just sitting and being mindful and f- being aware of your breath and um, allowing your mind to just like be without this direction. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's such a, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> That was beautiful. You get bro. fucking lost in it whenever you check in. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's with you, bro. it's really it's really great. Like, um, I don't have to smoke so much weed. Like, you know, a lot of times, um, uh, if I would get upset, um, <clears throat> I would always smoke to like calm myself, right? And then, like use it as like this medicinal substance as opposed to like having the tools to bring myself out of this fucking enragement, mm. right? Um, and with meditation. I find that a it puts me at a great zero marker mm-hmm. where it's going to take a long time for me to get pissed off about anything at mm-hmm. that point, and um, and it prepares me for things like things come my way that I'm just not expecting, and I just mm-hmm. it just fucking duck feathers, bro. Like I don't even doesn't phase me at all. I solve the problem. I never even for a moment felt any kind of anxiety or anger build up in me, and because I was reset, I was zero. I was balanced. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just can't, uh, it's, it's helped me so much. I'm like actually working towards, um, get another reason that I need to learn not smoking weed anymore. Right. Really? Because I don't need it anymore. Right. Like, so mm-hmm. and now it's become like purely a recreational habit mm-hmm. where it's like, um, hanging out in the morning and I got, you know, a cup of coffee and I'll, I'll smoke a little weed mm-hmm. or, you know, I'm ch- chilling out and fucking working on some videos and I'll spark up a joint. Right. And it's like, I don't really need that. And it doesn't really it's more of a habit that I'm doing and really it's just giving me brain fog and with the Very practices nice. of mindfulness and, and self-control um, it's like I feel like yeah I'll be fine I'll be fine without that shit you know and I've I've kicked it a few times where I just you like probably throw it away fine without it too um, and it's like you're irritated for a week and then yeah 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 it's like what the fuck was I doing you know just slowing myself down just for the yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's one step at a time. It's one step at a time. Like anything else, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, I highly recommend 
practicing it uh once a day you know like i got really um i got into it by practicing uh at dusk so like the moon's coming up temperature's perfect birds are fucking chirping and shit and you're just sitting in the backyard <laughs> um just focusing you know just being mindful and, and doing your best to be nothing and uh and then you know you can move it to the morning like i like doing it in the morning or and night if i can or you know if i remember to or whatever you like you get caught up and you're just like oh we just let's watch another episode instead of meditating before bed kind of yeah. thing but i mean i'm fucking human who gives a shit right but like when i do meditate in the morning you know like i'll work out and meditate or meditate and work out and then uh the fucking day is great those are the best days really those are the best days and same if I meditate before I go to bed, I fucking sleep like a champion. Great fucking dreams. Really? And yeah, the best the best sleep. Because you're fucking putting your body in it, the perfect state of being. You're always fucking all this bullshit and you're cramped <laughs> up and you're anxious and you, your hormones are and like your your fucking all your levels are just, you know, they're all over the fucking place yeah, all day. Yeah. I mean I drink caffeine, you know, I'll have a I'll have a coffee. And that fucking, that throws me all off. I have some sugar after dinner with, some, you know, with a dessert, and that throws you all off. <laughs> and then I smoke a little bit of weed, and it's just like this chemical mixture, and it's just like, ah, I've been focusing on all this. Mm -hmm. and so you become aware of it, really, when, you're, when, you're, when your effort all day is to be mindful and not lose your shit. Yeah. Um, and really get your, sh you get your focus together, you start to realize all these other things are happening, and you're like, why am I doing all these things to myself? So, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, it it starts to take on a life of its own. I bet. Yeah. And the more you practice it, the more you realize, oh, is this what I'm supposed to be fucking doing? <laughs> this is what I'm supposed <laughs> to be doing, isn't it? Uh, it only took me 34 fucking years to realize... It only took me 34 years. The path that I was walking was fucking bullshit, you know? Mm. And it's like... This is really, this is the real game that we should be playing. Yeah. But I just sound like a crazy person to everybody else in the world. You know, like the second I fucking say the word meditation to a fucking, uh, a normal person in America, uh, I'm a crazy fucking nut, right? I'm this, I'm this. Really? Yeah. You know, you're, now you're just this fucking religious spiritual weirdo who fucking sits and it, with their legs crossed, right? And it's like, fuck you, I'm going to drink, my, you know, I'm going to drink beer and smoke cigarettes and, uh, and fucking watch football, you know? And it's just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, but wow. I don't know. I feel like nobody has any patience for it at all. Um, and, well, that's and nobody what I need has to get good any at. interest in it. Uh, and I tell people all the time, like, man, it's done so many wonders for me. I was super depressed, had fucking serious addiction issues and like, no shit. Um, yeah, and I just, you know, slowly rebuilt myself, right? Like, you just work through on Through meditation? It. Through, yeah, through reading and meditation yeah. and, yeah, like, fucking not drinking alcohol, you know, and don't sm stop smoking cigarettes mm -hmm. and then, you know, like, clean your diet up, start eating, start exercising and then start meditating and, and it's just, like, one step at a time to, like, yeah. slowly not be a piece of shit. It's like, I was watching Joey Diaz the other night. He's like, these motherfuckers coming to the bar and he goes, uh... He goes, yeah, I'm sober now, man. You know, he's like, I stopped doing all these fucking drugs. He goes, what the fuck? You want a medal? He's like, you're not supposed to do drugs in the first place, you dumb motherfucker. He goes, nobody gives a shit that you're sober now. He goes, now you're just doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? Like, That's funny. And it's so true. It's like you know, we get lost. We get lost and we, we don't realize especially we're in drugs, fucking man. up. Yeah, especially and you and drugs will make you rationalize all kinds of crazy shit. Fuck yeah, it will. Uh, yeah, and and you just fucking get lost in them motherfuckers. Yeah, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's been a fun exp. Uh, well, it's been a hell of a ride. I don't know if the whole thing's been fun. <laughs> it's been a ride nonetheless, man. It's been a ride, bro. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and every day, you know, is a a new adventure for me, man. Like, uh, I really look for I look forward to going down the road again. And that wasn't the case for a long time for me, you know? It was like every day. Uh, like, I like waking up now. Yeah. I That was a hard one for me. That was a real hard one for me. Really? Um, yeah, I always hated waking up. Like, oh, God, here it goes again, right? I'm fucking still trapped in this waking world. Waking up, dreading what the day will bring you. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah Before I, I even feeling. knew it was coming. And, I know that feeling. And see, and that's perception. That's a lie you're telling yourself. 
Yeah. That's a fucking lie you're telling yourself, and it will just bury you. It will fucking bury you because none of this is real, man. You know, if you really want to, I don't. None of it's fucking real. This mm-hmm. is all a goddamn dream. It's an illusion, and that we fucking that we've all convinced ourselves is important, and it's not. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and 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 it can get really dark mm-hmm. when you start to put so much meaning into meaningless shit. Yeah. And um, try to control the world around you as opposed to just going with it. But yeah, I can I can keep rambling about this shit for a long time too. But um, no, I'll share oh, some. Trust me, if I had more time, I'd love to hear all of oh, it. Oh yeah, no, I know you got to go see your uh, you got an appointment after this. But um, yeah, no, and I'll send you some links to it. Please do, I, please do, because like I said, it's something that I'm really trying to get into. I genuinely want to get into it because one of my worst flaws is my sheer impatience. Yeah. And I need to get rid of that. I need to develop patience. And I think that meditation would be one of the best ways to exercise and, you know, just build up patience. Yeah. It helps with it. It helps yeah. with all that shit, man. Yeah. And um and you're already you're already on the path, you know, it's just like it's just like being an alcoholic the second you fucking stand up and say, My name's Jason, I'm an alcoholic, you go, Oh fuck. I just did that, and that's yeah. the truth. Mm-hmm. I really am an alcoholic. And you go, I fucking got to make some changes, don't I? Yeah, <laughs> I do. And it's just like all this happens, boof, instantly. The second you make that decision to better your life, mm-hmm. it's like this chain reaction of events is going to occur in front of you as long as you, and as long as you keep the practice, mm-hmm. you get better at it. It's just like guitar. You practice guitar every day, you get really good at guitar. Yeah. You practice being yeah. mindful every day, you get really good at being mindful. Absolutely. And I've... Um, and I like to end the um, the conversation that we're having. I mean, we're getting you out of here um, by saying, like, I personally have gone from two years ago, which was probably one of the darkest points of my life, right? Like, it was like my whole... This were whole, you playing in your band at this time? I think so. I don't, no, 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 I wasn't. But, um, like, building up and building up and building up and not mm-hmm. dealing with my problems properly and not um, dealing with my thought processes and and focus and on mm-hmm. mindfulness and and like i i got i reached i was really fucking in a dark place and now um recently um two years of practicing and reading a lot and like trying to meditate as much as i can and trying to focus um, on on me being a better me right uh and i'm having the best fucking days I've ever had it in my life. Like, it's really encouraging. For n- no fucking reason at all. I am just ecstatic just to be alive and doing dishes in my fucking house. It's crazy. And it's because um, it's, it's not that anything's gotten better in the world around me physically. Mm-hmm. It's my perception of the world that's gotten better. And, um, and, like I said, this world is a fucking illusion, man. And it's however you choose to see it is how it really is. Uh, because that's all you have is the illusion, the hallucination in your fucking, mm-hmm. in your mind. And so you'll have, um, yeah. I, anyways, I'll close that with somebody saying, yeah, I had, had the best fucking days of my life. Just regular fucking days, you know, just a fucking Tuesday. We don't do anything special. It's like the best day of my life. You know, that's encouraging and um, it's inspiring to get me to want to do it even more. Yeah, man. Absolutely. I, I, everybody should be doing it, man. It's everybody like, should be doing it. Yeah. Yoga, yeah. meditation, like take care of your body and mind. Yeah. It's, these things are combined. They're one thing. Yeah. Right. And you're responsible for them. And um, and they in turn tell you how you feel and what's yeah. around you. Uh, and so it's you you should do yourself a favor and be responsible for it and take care of it and love yourself and look yourself right in the fucking eyes in the mirror <laughs> say fucking love you man I got your best interest in mind I want to take care of you because your body needs to hear that from you you know your ego needs to hear that from most you. definitely um, so yeah but I look forward to hearing from you about your meditation practices I know I'll be you talking will. to you on messenger hit you me will. up as much as you want man I'll give you more like practices, but try the count to ten with the breathing. Count I will. To, I most count definitely up to will. ten and then count back to one. What you'll you'll notice, your mind starts to drift. You'll be like, "Oh, was I at six or seven? You go, "Ah, start <laughs> start over again. Go back to one. It's not a rush. You're not trying to get anywhere when you're meditating, right? Don't think about how much yeah. time you've been out there. Don't think about what you're going to do next. Just be in that moment. 
cool. So, but I love you very much, Brandon. It's well, been a great too, fucking man. time having you on my podcast. I can't thank you enough for having me on, man. Dude, I, yeah, dude, thanks for coming. It's been uh, so much fun talking to you, and we, we could talk for fucking ever, I know, and I'll have to have you back on again. So, Most um, definitely. Yeah. So once again, this has been To the Fullest with Jason Forberg, Brandon Cole. You're the man. I'm going to play us off with your uh, video here. The uh, the Dirty Paradise fucking uh, HOB video. Anyways, man, fucking Thousand peace blues. and love, y'all. Right. Take it easy. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.